Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Hi everybody, thanks for watching this video. This is the problem set 2 factoring video. And uh, just a quick pause here at the beginning. Uh, take note of my phone number there, that's my business line, and my website. And uh, those two places are where you can find out more information. Uh, these are free instructional videos for students, high school, middle school, college, and uh, even adults uh, going back to school. So uh, I do these to uh, practice some concepts here for everybody and answer questions and help people out. But I also have paying clients who pay me hourly for supporting what they do in their classrooms or even their home schools. So um, give me a try, take a look at uh, those numbers, contact information if you want more information. First lesson is free. Here's our lesson today. We're continuing our conversation about factoring polynomials. And the idea is that we're looking for the GCF, greatest common factor of each expression. Now these five right here I have showing are all trinomials. Well, actually the last two are quadrinomials or polynomials. There's four terms. But I'll do the first one with you and then I would like you to hit pause on the video and try the rest. So there's two steps here. We're going to look at the number coefficients and we're going to try to figure out what the largest factor of those number parts are. So obviously 2 goes into all three of those numbers and even 3, but think bigger, how about 6? How about 8? Is it possible 8? Well if I look at it, it looks like 6 is the largest common factor. So I'm going to put a 6 out here. Okay. Then we're going to look at the um, the variable parts, this is r squared, r, which is r to the first, and there is no r on the last term. Okay, I can't take an r and put an r on the outside because there's not at least one r in all terms. Okay, so basically 6 is the greatest common factor. So what does that leave us with? Well, 6 times what gives you 24r squared? Well, that would be 4, and then of course we have to have our r squared with it. Okay, now we're going to match the signs in the middle, and that makes these second and third terms positive. 6 times what is 42r? 7, don't forget the r, and 6 times what is 54? 6 times 9. All right, so in my head I'm going to multiply that out and see if that works. This is the distributive property, so I multiply those two. Does it give me 24r squared? Yes. And of course you don't have to draw these lines, you can just do this in your head. 6 times 7 is 42, but I have an r factor with it, 42r. And finally, 6 times 9 is 54. Alright, pause the video and try 7, 8, 9, and 10. Look for the greatest common factor of those expressions. Alright, I hope you've tried 7, 8, 9, and 10 in this problem set. I've already taken care of number 6, and now let's take a look at number 7. Okay, notice how the GCF on the outside is a 5 and an n to the 4th, okay? You look for the largest number of n's that you can factor out of each, okay? A single n would not be enough. Notice how I have n to the 4th here, I have n to the 4th plus another n there, and n to the 6th, okay? So uh, when I multiply it back with distributive property to check, I'm going to add those exponents. So I get 25 and n to the 6th and check it. Yep. And 5n to the 4th times 5n is 25n to the, remember this is n to the 1st, kind of an invisible one there, and that gives me 25n to the 5th. And then the negative sign means that 9 there has to be negative to make the whole thing multiply out, and that is my third term. Okay, number 8, check your answer. Let's see what you got. The greatest common factor is an 8 and a v to the 4th. Okay, again, you want to find the largest group of V's that you can take out of each, uh, divide out of each. And a 2 is not big enough, a 4 is not big enough, it must be an 8. Okay, and number 9, 10 is the greatest common factor, leaving me with these 
four terms on the inside. If I were to use the descriptive property multiplying those out, I would get my beginning expression. Okay. Notice the clue here is that all these coefficient numbers end in zero. I don't have an n in the first term, so I can't have an n factor on the outside. And finally, number 10, um, I'm going to take a k factor out along with an 8. So it's an 8k for the greatest common factor. Okay? Watch your signs, and again, you check by using distributive property. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.